Hello, welcome to another tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can come up with a small Python script that allows you to split a rest of data set like this DM right here into smaller pieces that are equal in size. So our result is going to look something like this. You can see here I've split my original raster into nine smaller pieces. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe your raster data is just too large to be processed all at once. And for that, you split it into smaller pieces, process each of them individually, and then merge the results back together. Okay, so let's get started and walk through everything step by step. As mentioned in the title of this video, we are going to use the GDAL Python library to accomplish this task. And to reduce the size of our input raster, we can either use the function GDAL warp or GDAL translate. I will show you both ways, but let's first of all focus on GDAL warp, which I've introduced in a previous tutorial. You can use it to reproject your raster data, resample it, clip it to a polygon, or clip it by providing some output bounds, as you can see here. So if we want to create some tiles that are smaller than our initial dataset, we will have to provide GDAL warp with the minimum x, minimum y, maximum x, and maximum y coordinate of the new smaller tile that we want to create. And if we do this in a loop with different x and y coordinates, we can get different tiles that in the end cover the entire extent of our initial input raster. Now the question is, how can we get the coordinates that indicate the extent of the nine smaller pieces that we want to create? Let's first find out what kind of information we can get from our initial raster, which I've just loaded into Python as a GDAL dataset. As you might remember from a GDAL dataset, we can get information on its resolution and the coordinates of its upper left corner by looking at the geotransform. So I'll create a new variable and from our DM I want to get the geotransform. Now you see we have a new tuple in our variables and here we have the x and y coordinate of our upper left corner. So if we look back at our DEM, we basically now know where this point up here is. And if we think of that point in terms of X and Y coordinates again, we can see that at this point we have the minimum X and the maximum Y coordinate. Let's put this in our code. So the minimum X is equal to this first value of the geotransform. And Y max is equal to the one, two, three, fourth value so put a 3 right here. Let's also store the resolution because we were going to need that in a bit. You can see the resolution in x and y direction is the same. So here I will just get the first value like this. And now that we have this point location, we can use it to figure out the minimum and maximum x coordinates that confine our new tiles and also of course minimum y and maximum y. Now how to get to these points? Well the idea here is that we first determine the length in units of our spatial reference system of the tiles that we want to create and then add this length in x direction to the minimum x coordinate and that way we can figure out what the minimum x coordinate of all these tiles in the middle is going to be. Same thing in y direction of course and now if you're asking yourself how we can get the length of each of these tiles well you remember we've already figured out the resolution of our raster we can also find out the size of our raster in pixels and then if we multiply the raster resolution with the number of pixels in x direction we get the total length of our raster which we can then divide by the number of tiles that we want to create in this case that's three now i hope that the concept is clear let's try to implement it first we're going to find out the total length of our raster in x direction which is going to be raster resolution times the number of pixels that there are in our raster in x direction, which we can get from our DEM like this. Simply have to type raster x size. Now you can see this is 515 pixels and if we multiply that by 10 meters, of course we have to run everything, then we get a total length in x direction of 5115 meters. Bear in mind that this is in units of your spatial reference system. I'm using the UTM system here, but your size might be in units of degrees. Okay, so same thing for the y length. This is resolution times the number of pixels in y direction. All right, now we want to divide the total length of our raster by three. I will store that in a separate variable so you will be able to change that later on. 
And now the size in x direction of a single new tile that we're going to create, I'll call that x size, is going to be the length of our raster in x direction divided by 3. Same thing for the y size. And now that we have that, by the way, our new tiles are going to have a size of 1716 meters times 1723 meters. We can now add this number to the initial x and y coordinates to determine the x and y coordinates of the tiles that we're about to create. As you can see, to constrain all of these three tiles, we need four x coordinates in total. This x coordinate we already have, so we don't really need to add anything to it. But to get to this point, we need to add one times our tile length in x direction. To get to this point, we need to add it twice. And this point is three times our tile length away from our initial minimum x value. Now I will create a list that stores all of these x coordinates. I'll call that x steps. And then we want to add to our minimum x coordinate the size of our tiles in x direction times some number and this variable i we need to replace with the values from 0 to 3 to obtain the result I just showed you. So we want to multiply the x size with the value i for i in range and here we're going to put the number of tiles that we're going to create so div and here we need to actually add 1 because else we would only get the values 0, 1, and 2, but we need to include 3 as well, so that's why we add plus 1 here. Now we will do a similar thing to determine all these steps in y direction. And here you notice we don't have a y min value, but y max instead. So I'll put that here. And because our y coordinates are actually decreasing in this direction, we will have to subtract the size of our tiles in y direction here instead of adding it. We will again multiply them by some number i for i in range and here again div plus 1. Alright, let's run this. And now we have two lists with all the x and y coordinates that we need to create nine equally sized smaller pieces of our initial DEM. Okay, now we only have to make sure that we now get the right combinations of minimum and maximum x and y coordinates. And for that we will create loops. Two loops in particular, one for the x coordinates and a second one for the y coordinates. So let's start with the first one for i in range diff. And here we don't need to add plus 1 because we're only taking 3 steps in x direction. This fourth coordinate is just the x max coordinates of all the tiles on the right side. And like this we will also loop through all the y coordinates. So for j in range diff we will assign different y coordinates so that the entire loop works like this. We will take the first value in our list of x coordinates as x min value and the second one as x max. And then for those two coordinates, we will create tiles with all of the available y coordinates. So y max here, y min here, then y max here, y min there, y max here, y min there. So we will get three tiles with the same x min and x max coordinates, but different y min, y max values. Then our counter i is increased, we'll go to this x coordinate, set that to x min, this one is x max, and then we loop through all of the y coordinates. Then we repeat this process for the last column, and then we're done. So let's just make sure we assign the right coordinates in our loop and then use GDAL warp to cut our DEM. So x min is going to be, and I hope you say it like this, the ith value of our list of x coordinates. So x steps index i and i is going to be replaced with the values 0, 1 and 2. And then the corresponding x max is going to be the next x coordinate, so i plus 1. And as for the y coordinates, remember we are starting with y max and then going down. So the coordinate within our list of y coordinates at the index j is y max, and then y min is y steps j plus 1, so the next value. Let's print out all of this to make sure the coordinates are right. And run this and we see here nine pairs of x min, x max, y min and y max coordinates and let's take these coordinates and give them to GDAL warp to create new rasters that have these coordinates as output bounds.
So GDAL warp. The first thing that we need to provide is a destination name or a destination data set. I'll just provide a destination name. So all tiles will be saved to a new GeoTIFF file. I will call them DEM. And then to give each tile a unique name, I will add I and J to that name. Add.tiff for GeoTIFF file. Input is our DEM data set, which we have opened up here already. So I can just simply put DEM right here. And then the most important option that we have to provide is output bounds and set them to xmin, ymin, xmax and ymax. I will also provide a no data value, set that to minus 9999. And now we can run this, but first I'll show you my working directory, which is pretty empty right now. The only thing in there is the DEM and my Python script. But now if we run all of this and look at my working directory again, we now have nine new GeoTIFF files and they look like this. So just the result that we wanted, smaller pieces of our initial input raster file. I remember I also wanted to show you how to use GDAL translate to accomplish the same task. So that would be GDAL translate Again, destination name, I'll just copy this, maybe call that DEM translate. Input dataset is still the DEM. And now the option that we have to provide to cut our DEM is now called output bounds, but instead projection window. So a sub window in projected coordinates to extract. And notice the order in which we have to provide x min and x max coordinates is different. So we'll start with the x coordinate of the upper left corner and the y coordinate of the upper left corner. So that is x min and y max and then lower right x is x max and lower right y is y min. Confusing maybe but no problem really because we already have all those values here. So I'll just set projection window to x min y max x max y min run everything and you see same result but different technique now here are some suggested changes that you might want to carry out first of all you can of course increase the number of tiles that you're creating in x and y direction so for example you could set three to five and get this result Perhaps you want to create a different number of tiles in x and y direction. Then you could create an x divider and a y divider. I'll set that to two. So five tiles in x direction, two tiles in y direction. Then of course you need to set that to x div, y div. Here as well. And here we're looping through the x coordinates. So x div here and y div here. Run that. And you see, this also works perfectly. Finally, one thing that I noticed is cutting my raster at the defined coordinates slightly changes the resolution of the tiles I'm creating. You can see if I call GDAL info, and then let's just take this DM. It used to have a resolution of 10 by 10 meters. Now that is slightly smaller. Why is that? Well, dividing the entire length of my raster by whatever number of pieces you want to create may result in some odd numbers. And in this example, the Y size of my tiles is now 2585 meters, which cannot be divided by 10. So within the given coordinates, you can't really create pixels that all have a 10 meter resolution. You could of course force GDAL to create tiles with a 10 meter resolution by setting Xres to our initial resolution and y res as well. And if we now run this again, the pixel size of the tile 00 has changed to 10 by 10 meters, but this might result in small gaps or overlaps of your tiles. I can show you I've now underlined the initial DM and if you look down here, the new tile that I've created does not really extend as far as my initial DM does. And I can also show you an example for overlap, which we can find here. So here are my tiles. And you see between those two, there is some overlap in this region. So I do not recommend full setting a resolution. If you're planning to individually process your raster tiles and then merge the result back together, 
I would leave it like it is and then make sure my final result has a resolution of 10 by 10 meters again. Or of course what else you could do is to determine the tile size, not by dividing the entire length of the initial raster in units of your spatial reference system, but instead first divide its size in pixels by some number, round that, and then multiply that by your resolution to ensure your tile size is always a multiple of your raster resolution. But I will leave it up to you to make these changes if necessary. Shouldn't be too hard, my code is in the description. I'm done for this tutorial. For my next video, I'm planning to show you how to use GDAL to put this dismember DM back together. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. As always, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.